तो ये नाम शायद ही आज लोगों के जहन में हो जिसने कुछ साल पहले साढ़े चार साल की उम्र में सात घंटे दो मिनट में पैंसठ किलोमीटर की दूरी तय करके नया और अनोखा रिकॉर्ड कायम किया था और इस उपलब्धि के लिए वो पूरे मीडिया में छाया हुआ था जी हाँ हम उसी प्रतिभाशाली बालक की बात कर रहे हैं जो आज चौदह साल का हो गया है और गुमनामी की कगार पर खड़ा है 2006 में करीब साढ़े चार साल की उम्र में बुधिया ने दुनिया के सबसे कम उम्र के मैराथन रनर के रूप में लिम्का बुक ऑफ वर्ल्ड रिकॉर्ड्स में अपना नाम दर्ज किया साल 2007 के बाद से बुधिया के चर्चे कम हो गए और वो धीरे धीरे ओडिशा के सड़कों से गायब हो गया कभी मैराथन प्रोडिजी के नाम से मशहूर 14 साल का बुधिया आज करीब 150 बच्चों के साथ भुवनेश्वर के कलिंग स्टेडियम हॉस्टल में रहता है आज भी वो सुबह 6 बजे उठता है पर घंटों की कई प्रैक्टिस के बजाय उसे दिन में एक दो घंटे की ही कंडीशनल ट्रेनिंग दी जाती है बुधिया ने अपने कोच विरंची के साथ मिलकर ओलम्पिक में मेडल जीतने का सपना देखा था आज वो कुपोषण का शिकार है और इस परिस्थिति में ओलंपिक क्या वो स्कूल के रेस में भी जीत हासिल नहीं कर सकता है कभी मैराथन के लिए प्रशिक्षित कई किलोमीटरों तक दौड़ने वाले बुधिया को आज 100-200 मीटर की दौड़ का प्रशिक्षण दिया जा रहा है उसकी योग्यता का परीक्षण करने के लिए उसके कोच ने कभी भी उसे तेज दौड़ने वालों के साथ नहीं दौड़ाया अब तो बुधिया के पास उसके बचपन के ऐतिहासिक रिकॉर्ड की धुंधली याद ही रह गयी है Now I just wanted to show you that how what how the injury can spoil the entire championships in London. The eight Olympic champion suffered an apparent hamstring injury on his left leg just 21 strides into the final leg of the 4 by 100 meter relay. The astonishing turn of events marked what was expected to be a golden farewell for the legendary athlete who suddenly stumbled, hobbled a few strides before falling on the track in pain and agony. He was helped into a wheelchair and he eventually got to his feet and limped over to the finishing line. With Bolt on the ground and the Jamaicans out of contention, the gold came down to a sprint for the finish between Christian Coleman of the United States and Nathaniel Michelle Blake of Britain. Yet another upset in the championships was from British long-distance runner Mo Farah who came second behind Ethiopia's Mukhtar Edris. Alison Felix, however, produced a remarkable record the same night, earning a record 15th gold medal in a career going back to 2005. So, in this structure, I just wanted to tell you that what is the CEM structure? जो Central Athlete Injury Management Cell है, वहाँ एक court team है, जिसको Central Court Team बोलते हैं, एक NRRT team है, National Resource Repository Team, and ऑन फील्ड स्पोर्ट्स मेडिसिन एक्सपर्ट है एंड ए डब्ल्यू सी है दीज आर दोर डिफरेंट स्ट्रक्चर विच इज अंडर सी एम नाउ द स्पोर्ट्स मेडिसिन जो डॉक्टर है जो इन फील्ड में एथलीट को मैनेज करते हैं तो दे आर द मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट बिकॉज दे दे आर सपोज टू डायग्नोज द इंजुरी एंड देन द इंजुरी इफ इट इज दे कैन ट्रीट वेल they uh, that that's the uh, that, that is their their duty then if they cannot manage the injury then it will go to the escalate to the next level which is uh, they will inform the awc athlete wellness cell which is located at delhi and awc will not give any advice i wanted to make it very clear awc doctor or physio will not advise only if the injury is not managed by the on field sports medicine expert then they will have the licensing of on field sports medicine expert and nrrt team to settle the issue to um, give the uh, uh, give the justice to the athlete regarding injury i will further clarify that during discussion so these are the responsibilities and uh, of the doctor who is in field in field doctor those who are working with the athlete Now the doctors and physiotherapists assess, advise, investigate, and manage. 
these are the four different uh, thing which is been done by the doctor and physio. We have already uh, listed out the map physiotherapies, and we are in the process of even um, making the strength and conditioning expert as well in the next phase. They are the on-field sports medicine expert. They are the first respondent. They are primary responsibility is the diagnosis, assessment, and investigation. Depending on severity of the case, referred to an expert or to the local impaneled medical center. Monitor treatment outcome, goal setting, and return to play, and escalate to AWC if required. Most of the cases, what we have seen, around 70 to 80 percent of the cases is been managed. Even 80 percent, more than 85 percent cases been managed by the local sports medicine doctors who are attending the athlete. Only few cases where the surgery is required, whether um, um, uh, the uh, recovery or the recovery management after surgery is required. For that, we require the escalate to the next level, which is NRRT or uh, Central Court team. Ensure pre-induction participation screening of athlete and to follow up that the pre-induction uh, pre and the participation tomorrow, uh, Dr. Rupali will talk about. So this is a structure when the athlete is injured, then he would be the imp uh, they are examined by the sports medicine doctor. Then uh, this is the on-field sports medicine doctor. If they cannot manage, then they will only, only inform to uh, AWC cell, athlete wellness cell, and then athlete wellness cell will give them the direction that, that NRT team available, the NRT doctors would be would be um, these team, this CWC will discuss with the NRRT people and give you the access to the doctors, to this um, on-field sports medicine specialist. Then if that is not been managed within 24 hours to 36 hours, then it will escalate to the next level, which is a central court team. And these are the responsibilities of NRRT senior and experienced orthopedic surgeon and sports physician to oversee the activities of on-field on -field, uh, sports medicine expert and provide the opinion in case referred by the on-field sports medicine expert. Responsibilities is the periodic evaluation and objective mapping of the progress. This is very, very th three word is very, very important that objective mapping the pro progress. Prepare the uniform protocol of scientific evaluation. This is the NRRT's responsibility. And the central court team is comprised of Dr. Eskes Maria, uh, Dr. Dinsha Padiwala, Bibhu Naik, Harsh Mahajan, Srikant, Dr. VK Srinivas. Basically, he is a cardiologist. We have only one cardiologist, and most of them are Dr. Mahajan, is basically a uh, very eminent radiologist in the country. Um, all of you know, and um, Maria sir is the chairman of the committee. He's a very renowned um, knee surgeon. Bibu is a sports medicine expert. So these are the people who to, they are in the central team. And uh, basically to oversee the injury and illness management to NRT on-field sports medicine expert, lay down the review board injury management protocol, including pre-induction, participation screening, injury prevention, early detection, etc. And the team shall advise NRRT and TOPS. These are basically the central team's responsibility is basically advisor. The mainly the athletes um, uh, thing will be managed by the NRRT team. If the surgery is required, then obviously uh, we have to go to the um, uh, next level, like the central court team. Of course, in our NRRT team also, we have the orthopedic surgeon. So the AWC is under TOPS division and will be responsible for implementing an injury management system. The objective is basically the athlete's access uh, to best rehabilitation facilities, sports science evaluation, with reduced geographical and administrative barrier. Round the year education and upgradation of knowledge of athletes, coaches, and support staff through various programs. 
and set up the standard protocol for periodic assessment to prevent injury or early detection of injury. And this is uh, to provide the administrative and various committee to ensure the coordination with the various stakeholder, ensure complete coordination and timely treatment, maintain data repository and feedback me mechanism, conduct athlete education program. It is one of our mandates. Uh, coordinate with uh, designated centers to conduct a pre-induction participation screening of athlete as per requirement and keeping a track of pending uh, return to play advice. So education program, which is for that we are all uh, we, we are all waiting because from tomorrow onward our education program will start. So this is a pre-participation where uh, we have the pre-participation screening. It would be followed by IOC system of injury record, injury assessment, and uh, that is uh, the whole process. Then if you want to have any question, because uh, 1145, uh, we have a very important meeting for TW, uh, TIDC. So I can have some time to uh, around five minutes to uh, take your question. Any question? Ronak, Rupesh, any question from your side? Is that clear to you all? Yes, sir, that is fine. Ronak? Sir, uh, good morning, sir. Hi, good morning, Ronak. Uh, I had just one question, sir, that uh, a lot of my athletes have, uh, which have been mapped, so they have their physiotherapists already working on, like those on-field physiotherapists. So we do not have to act like an on-field physiotherapist for them, right? Uh, I, I, your your voice is not very clear, uh, uh, Rona. Hello. Hi, Rona. Go ahead. Yes, sir. So my question was, uh, a lot of my athletes who have been mapped under uh, uh, me as uh, their own on-field phys uh, physiotherapist as well as like their own team. So I don't have to uh, uh, like replace them and be their uh, on-field physiotherapist for that, right? No, your, your main job is basically, this is a second tire. If they require, um, uh, require to have the consultation with you, they can. But again, um, the athlete, um, I, I request all of you that the athlete, this program, we wanted to empower athletes. Uh, neither overpower or be, because this, this entire program is basically athlete centric. And whatever the, the so the, if the athlete is disturbed, if four or five people are constantly talking to the athlete, then I, I, uh, we will lose our focus. It is the athlete, athlete. will contact and, uh, uh, and you, can, you, you can give the support to them. The athlete will primary contact is the, uh, the on-field sports medicine expert and the physios and the strength and conditioning expert, who are those who are on-field. And then the second thing where uh, the physiotherapy are being mapped and who are staying in a distant place, they can directly talk to CWC whenever the injury is happening. Uh, basically, again, if they require, if you have uh, some kind of um, uh, technical inputs is required for your physio, you can give. But again, um, I, I think it's uh, better to avoid that because we have to, we have even in field, uh, on field physiotherapists uh, are equally competent. I mean, there should not be any feeling, hard feeling that somebody is advising me. Ronak, I am, is that clear? Of course, sir. I was also all of the same opinion. Thank you, sir. Right.
our two three uh, physiotherapists those who are senior physiotherapists on board of sai uh, do they have any question uh, hello yes uh, good afternoon sir this is apurva i am posted in mumbai my question was uh, some of the athletes which are mapped to me uh, they uh, they are not uh, practicing at the place where i am posted they are far away and also they don't have any physiotherapist with them so what to do in that case i uh, you are you are posted in uh, where gandhinagar sir mumbai mumbai and you are mapped against uh, the athlete uh, where they are uh, training uh, some of them are in mumbai uh, some of them uh, one of them is in nashik he had the athletes who were practicing and or uh, so they don't have on ahmednagar also so they don't have any physiotherapist with them so what to do in that case sir uh if there is, there is no physiotherapist available with them then your center has got the physiotherapy you are the physiotherapist you have to give them advice yes. when there is no physiotherapy definitely it is your responsibility to uh, guide them sir but guide on on call only because they are far away from us that's true to present in there when they case, are practicing in that case in that case the athlete can be called to center if they are located in mumbai only then you can call to the mumbai center which has the center in mumbai where the where they have a, a bare minimum facility available is that uh, not true apurva uh, yes sir uh, that's okay sir because yeah. one of my colleague faced that issue that uh, uh, one of the athlete was in ahmednagar and there was no doctor available also so she was guiding uh, uh, her on a call itself so the uh, if the athlete is having injury and they cannot come to our center also then what we can do that's true what is our objective we have we have only started our journey and in this journey we are gradually in the next level we will be graduated in the next few, uh, few weeks this is the initial teasing will always occur and we will over overcome this i'm sure okay. fine sir okay thank you so thank you thank you because you if you don't have the question um uh, uh thank you very much for attending this thank you very much